we have a special guest that is uh, joining us today in the, in the image of name, well, name, image, and likeness. Uh, we're going to talk on that topic today. We have a special guest, Mr. Dustin McGuire. Uh, he's the founder of NameImageAndLikeness.com. Dustin is a former student athlete himself, a Division One basketball player who now runs a private law practice, and he serves as a family attorney, a mediator, and college athlete advocate. Uh, welcome, uh, Coach Dustin, because uh, he's also a coach as well. So welcome, Coach. Up, Thanks coach? so much for having me on, China. I'm, I'm excited to be here. And I uh, just have to, to give a special shout-out to Tommy. Grew up in the St. Louis area and watched him play in for the Rams as a kid. So thank you for the inspiration, Tommy. I don't think I can put into words what, what you guys meant to us as, as kids growing up in St. Louis. Yeah, man. Appreciate that, man. And, um, I, like I tell a lot of people, man, St. Louis got you know a great fan base. Um it's too bad it didn't work out here with the Rams, but I mean, my four years here, I mean, I had a great time. We won a lot of games, so I appreciate them sentiments. Just tell me about name, image, and likeness. What made you, you know, brand it, come up with the web, uh, your .com, your website, everything that's on it? What inspired that? So while I was a graduate assistant coach, I was attending the evening law school, so I got my law degree in 2014. And uh, that was right about the same time that the Ed O'Bannon lawsuit uh, was was being settled. And uh, for those of, of, of you in the audience that don't know about Ed O'Bannon and the lawsuit that came about from the NCAA video games, um, they were they were uh, video games, college basketball, college football, in, in which the, the players digital avatars were used. So their their likeness essentially was used in the in the games to make the games as real as possible, you know, made by EA Sports. And I was featured on the games myself at, at uh, St. Louis University while I was there. So I got to see, you know, the business side of it. And, um, you know, it was really the reason why I went to law school, just knowing about that lawsuit and knowing that, you know, there were rights that the, the athletes had um, for the first time. I was, I was learning about that as I was playing. Um, so, you know, followed that very, very closely. The lawsuit settled in 2014. I got my law degree in 2004. I got out of law school. Um, I had the opportunity to help somewhere between 50 and 100 of the, the athletes who were on those football and basketball games um, receive a portion of the, the settlement. There was $60 million between EA Sports and, and the NCAA um, for that uh, Ed O'Bannon lawsuit uh, settlement. And, and um, you know, no one really thought it was real because it was video games, right? I mean, it, you don't really think that it, it's ever going to be real in terms of getting a piece of the money. Uh, but it was, and and I made sure that my former teammates knew uh, that it was real, and and a lot of guys were able to get you know five, six, seven thousand um, dollars for for appearing on those video games. So that that concept was name, image, likeness, and we really have Ed O'Bannon to thank for for bringing that lawsuit on. In in you know the recent years, over the past eighteen months, we've seen California, then Colorado, most recently the state of Florida has passed state laws in which it has become against state law for any any state to um, have a, an entity such as the NCA deny athletes the same opportunities as any other student or any other citizen in the state to, to benefit from the use of their name, image, and likeness. What is the most complicated part about establishing this process for the name, image, and likeness? Well, right now, there is so much up in the air with name, image, likeness. I mean, believe it or not, during the middle of this pandemic, everything that's going on in our country right now, we have hearings going on in the United States Congress over name, wow. image, likeness. That's how important okay. it is. And I, I think and that's going on right now, that. you said. There are, the last week, the week before that, there are hearings going on over name, image, likeness. And, and why is that necessarily that, that college sports is so important that it, it you know, is, is to occupy the time of our federal government. It has a lot to do with these states passing their individual laws. Like I, I had repeated, July 1st of 2021 is when Florida's law goes into effect. Well, Congress is going to work very hard to keep us as the United States of America and to make sure that we have a uniform approach to our laws. What's going to happen when the state of Florida with its 11 Division I institutions is able to, to tell these, these prospective student-athletes that are coming in, Hey, you can do the same thing at Alabama, but you can also make money from your name and image likeness. It's, it's going to be a no-brainer that the kids are going to flock to not only Florida State, Florida, and Miami, 
but also Florida Gulf Coast and Stetson, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, the, the, as of right now, as we sit here and, and record this podcast, the Division I schools in the state of Florida are positioned to dominate over the next next year, two, three years, unless the, the federal government acts or other states get on board. How important is education prior to 2021? Like everybody's gearing up with branding, but the importance of understanding truly what name, image, and likeness is, how important is that? It, it's incredibly important right now. And, and Chad, I mean, you bring up the, the, the key topic right now, that, that education piece, because – um, just because it's not allowed at this moment doesn't mean you shouldn't be informed. I, I think with these new rights comes a lot of responsibility, right? Especially for these guys that are going to be able to make some money. You know, if, if you're going to be able to make 10, 15, $20,000, you know, at, at a minimum, you're going to have to pay taxes, right? So it, it comes with some responsibility in terms of knowing what you've got to do. Um, and, and I think really, you know, the focus has to be on providing resources to these guys to, to make sure that, you know, they understand what they can and cannot do. Um, but also that they're able to, to truly capitalize on it and aren't going to be put in a situation where they think, you know, I'm getting this money and I don't have to pay taxes on it. Now you're getting yourself in trouble with the IRS. So, you know, the, the professional resources need to be there, um, you know, from, from attorneys to CPAs, uh, just, just making sure that you know, the resources are there and these, these student athletes that have the opportunity to now make money for the first yeah, time. Man, should they also start thinking about starting an LLC or um, starting to think business wise before they come into the university? Like, should they hire an attorney like yourself or, or, or look to, to work with someone like you? Well, I, I think it's early to say right now in that chat because, you know, the proposal we most recently saw from the Power Five conferences, which was submitted to Congress to get passed it in the, the federal law I had mentioned was that athletes would have to wait a full semester and complete a full semester on a college campus before having the right to um, receive NIL benefits. And whether or not that will ultimately be the approach that that remains to be determined. But, you know, I, I think, you know, it, it, um, it, it's up to you as a college freshman, right? If you're going to be on, on campus as a freshman, you know, either that fall semester or, you know, after completing one semester, according to the Power Five's proposal, you'll be able to to have NIL value. That means being able to, to put on camps and clinics, working with kids um, and, and, of course, the social media like we had talked about. And, and you, you raised the, the important question of, raise, uh, of, of establishing the LLC. I, I think, yes, that needs to be done because, you know, the most simple example I can give um, you know, from the standpoint of an attorney that would be helping and advising these kids that are making money for the first time is, okay, if you, if you make $10,000 through your NIL during the course of your season, whether that's social media or, or putting on lessons or your personal appearance, what have you, $10,000. Well, if, if that's just income, that's going to be $10,000 of taxable income. But if you're going to then put on a camp, maybe you have expenses that, are, that go towards that camp that you can deduct from your NIL receipts. So instead of paying, you know, tax on the, on the full value of what you receive during the season, maybe that summer camp is essentially a tax write off so that you're, you're bringing your, your taxable income down. And then that amount that you ultimately have to pay tax on is substantially less than what you actually see. So, so what I'm hearing is, is not only establishing a brand, but establishing a business model of how to maximize your, because at the end of the day, yeah, you might be able to make money, but again, as NFL players and professional athletes understand, the more money you make, you go into a different tax bracket. So these are the educational things that you're, you're suggesting that they need to learn, right? This is the professional resources you're talking about, right? That's Absolutely. And, and, you know, the question remains to be answered. Will the athletic departments, you know, have this, this interest to make sure that the resources are there for the athletes. I sure hope they are. You know, we see every resource being there from the academic support to how many calories you're putting in your body, you know, in preparation for the season. I mean, the detail is there. And I don't think anyone can say that, you know, that the athletes aren't given a, a good chance at having a good athletic experience. They are. It's a very good experience on the majority of these athletic campuses. But you, you add in NIL, and then how does that look? Will the resources be there? Again, the, the question remains to be answered. Um, but that goes back to knowing your rights and, and knowing, um, you know, do I have to defer to uh, 
the, the athletic department or, or can I go out and get my own attorney? Um, and, and there, um, like, like with a lot of other areas right now, we, we still have questions. It's, it's remain, it's remaining to be determined, um, as to, to whether, um, you, you know, you'll be able to, to step on campus and, and already have, um, an agent, you know, the, the agent rule is, is very much still up in the air. We had, uh, seen last fall, I think it was the NSA said, okay, you can have an agent as a college basketball player, if you're, you're proceeding towards the NBA draft, but then if you don't get drafted, you got to lose that agent. So that's where we've seen the NCA with, with the agency. Um, will there be more flexibility with agents? Yes, I think so. But, you know, bottom line, however it shakes out, these kids, they have to have someone in their corner who's looking out for their interests and their interests alone. Uh, what's the third party going to look like at the college level now for, the, for, for these people? Well, it, it still is is up in the air. You know, how how will the third parties, you know, be handled? What rights will they have to, to get access to the players? We we still don't know. And and you know, the NCA is essentially begging Congress right now to bail them out and yeah. give them an antitrust exemption to say, hey, put put a federal approach in place and and allow us to still carve out some areas where there's not nil benefits. So. Um, it, it, it's still up in the air, and I, I don't mean to, to be slippery with my answers here, but I, it, it's hard to be definitive when when we don't know. We, we've got individual states taking uh, their approaches. We've got Congress working on it and the NCA making their, their recommendation and working through their lobbyists. So, um, you know, ultimately it, it's, it's, as I said, up in the air. What rights will the athletes have? Um, this, this coming October, there is going to be an announcement from the NCA in terms of what exactly NIL will look like. And then that following January, January 2021, that's when NCA Divisions 1, 2, and 3 will vote on the proposals that have come out from the NCA. NCA institutional uh, perspective, they're saying that the institution, yes, can provide resources, as you are saying, that they're, they're going to need, but they can't assist. Right. So that's where the third party, Tommy, is, is, is welcomed in because the institution is not able to help negotiate or help um, work with the student athlete throughout that process of entertaining um, someone that may come in from that name, image and lightning perspective. So uh, the best thing that an institution can do is just provide resources. But again, what does that look like? Because what are they providing resources to when, like Dustin is alluding to, there's no no cookie cutter yet. There's no answer, right? It's just kind of hypothetical. Yeah. And, and Chad, we will have more clarity there, you know, and, and whether the, the players are able to have every right or just some of the rights, it, it, it's remaining to be determined. But, you know, the, the, the obvious situation is that the, the businesses, the local businesses in the communities and are around the athletic department that are most likely to invest their precious marketing dollars with the athletes are those businesses that are already working with the athletic departments. I mean, that's, that's the reality of it, right? If, if you're looking at giving money towards, towards the athletes to, to help grow your business, I mean, you're, you're probably already working with the athletic department in some capacity. Mm-hmm. So there, there certainly is that conflict there, that conflict of interest between, um, you know, the athletic department and the individual athletes, because, you know, if, if you have one one business who's who's maybe looking at dividing their investment, um, you know that that's not going to be good for the athletic department. The reality is that that money going to the individual athletes as opposed to the athletic department um, that that certainly poses a, a threat to the business model that is college athletics. About Sonny Vaccaro has been to this whole movement. Yes, Tommy, thank you for asking about Sonny because he's, he's really the, the backbone of all this. I mentioned Ed O'Bannon, but it was really Sonny that w- was the, the driving force uh, of that lawsuit. And, and he has been the driving force of the individual states bringing about the NIL laws. So I had the opp- opportunity to work with Representative Emanuel Chris Welch from up near Chicago on Illinois' bill to get uh, Illinois to pass the same law that, that California and, and Colorado passed. Um, it, it's still, from what I understand, being worked on in the state of Illinois. Um, it passed in the House of Representatives, has not made it through the Senate yet. But um, Representative Welch was also very close with, with Sonny Vaccaro. And I, I've spoken with Sonny every couple weeks and just kept in touch with him about his work. And, um, you know, it's, it's really his vision and his understanding that these, these athletes have so much value um, on a grassroots level. I was a 15-year-old 
and I was at the Reebok ABCD camp and had the opportunity to be on the same team with some guys that, you know, went to play on to the big time, Greg Oden, Michael Conley, Daquan Cook. And I saw the, you know, the commercial aspect then. And, and um, you know, it, it just so happened while I was at the Reebok ABCD camp as, as a 15-year-old that the NBA's one-and-done rule was put in place. So, you know, there I was out in New Jersey playing with Greg Oden and, you know, saw him have to go to, to Ohio State for one year um, because for the very first time you could no longer be able to go directly to the NBA. And I knew at that moment that it was wrong. And I heard Sonny give a speech. And I, I, I'm not kidding. I was sitting next to Greg Oden as Sonny gave his speech. And I heard the passion in his voice about this. And I didn't truly understand it at that time. I didn't, I didn't fully grasp it. But his message was simple that day is in that they took away your choice. They took away your choice. So for the very first time, you didn't have the choice as, as a Greg Oden to go directly to the NBA. So we saw LeBron James and then Dwight Howard do that. And so then the very next year, Greg Oden had to go to Ohio State. And what happened? Well, he got hurt and didn't ultimately end up, you know, making the money that we all know that he was worth. So that experience and that, that firsthand um, knowledge and understanding of the of the flaw in our system has led me to be here today. Be a lane for for females or women's sports for for NIL. Absolutely, Chad, and and it, it's so important for people to understand that 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 is perhaps the the biggest piece of knowledge to take away uh, from our discussion and and from NIL in general. That it's not just the elite level men's basketball and football players. It, it's it's every sport. If you're in the spotlight. That's your moment, and, and no more so for, for the, the female athletes. So many of them don't get the opportunity, like the men, to play professional at all. So those four years, is, that's it for them. So you capitalize on those four years to the fullest extent possible, and then that's it. There's no professional, most likely. Um, so to me, it is, it is the female athletes, it is the athletes and, and the, quote, non-revenue generating sports that stand to benefit the most from this because, again, those four years that they have – to be a college athlete, that that's their time to shine. And that, that's that's the brightest the stage will ever be. They, you know, feel free to just let people know where they can find you. I know it's name, image, and likeness.com, but any of your socials um, that you would like to to share with uh, us at this time so people can follow you. We would like to get you back on the show again at a later time to kind of rehash, you know, and give updates. But um, in the meantime, is there any way uh, someone can follow you if they want to learn more about name, image, and likeness? Absolutely. Again, nameimagelikeness.com is, is the site. My name is Dustin McGuire. I'm an attorney in Edwardsville, Illinois. You can find my law office. I'm a family law attorney in Edwardsville, Illinois. It's edwardsvillefamilylaw.com. My phone number at my law office is 618-692-5255. And again, this name image likeness is my passion. I, I hope to be a resource to not only the current college athletes, but the prospective athletes and just provide the knowledge and, and, and resources is the focus. Yes, we are Players Talk Live, but we're on the Brawl Network. We're bigger than just our show. We have, as, as we're brothers on this show, um, brothers do football, we have brothers in our network. So we have other Brawl podcasts for your interest. If you have a special team, um, you know, I know you guys with St. Louis Rams, Baltimore Ravens, Titans, uh, Bills, uh, Lions, even a stint with the Browns, they all have brawls. So, again, if you love our content, hey, this is one platform. But, again, we're part of a network that has even more information. So we're like a one-stop shop, as Tommy always like to say, a resource center. So that's what we try to be for our student-athlete community, and that's what we want to be just for our fans. So, again, thank you for joining today's episode of Players Talk Live on the Brawl Network. I'm your host, Chad Allen with my co-host Tommy Polly and Eric King. We're signing out from Players Talk Live. You can follow us again at, at Players Talk Live on all social media platforms, all po- um, podcast platforms. And again, we're signing out. Thank you again. We appreciate the growing uh, audience each week, and we want to bring that content. So if you have any comments, please share comments, DM us, email us. Uh, Players Talk Live at Gmail, a message on Facebook, whatever it is. We want the feedback. We want to keep giving you great content each and every week um, because we are Players Talk Live where athlete voices matter.